next video, we're going to cover the short choke. We're going to cover rear naked choke. Then the most important part of both of these chokes is how to transition between the two of them. Getting to the rear naked choke or getting to the short choke is probably the hardest part, harder than actually finishing the choke. So it's going to be important to know how to transition between the two, whether it's short choke to rear naked or rear naked choke to short choke. That way you can get by your opponent's defenses, which are going to be tucking the chin and hand fighting. If you just show one choke at a time, applying them just by seeing the choke is very difficult. But knowing how to get by your opponent's defenses will help the success rate tremendously. So for our short choke, the keys here, just like all our chokes, we're pulling our opponent off their base. Now what I need to make sure I do is my choking arm is the top arm. It needs to come out and all the way around. So my goal should be to get my elbow underneath my opponent's chin as best as I can. Remember, for our chokes in jiu-jitsu, they're not airway chokes, so we're not attacking the throat, the front of the throat, we're not attacking the trachea, we're actually attacking the carotid arteries on the side. So what I need to do for a short choke and rear naked choke is my top arm needs to come all the way out, pushing my elbow through. So my elbow is going forward, and that way my four fingers can hook behind my opponent's shoulder. Now, if I'm doing short choke, all I'm going to do is take that hand out. I'm going to go palm to palm. Now, when I fall, I want to fall to that choking side. Once again, what I'm going to be doing is pulling my elbow straight back, and my top arm is pushing into the back of my opponent. So I'm pulling my elbow back and pushing to help me finish that choke. From our back control, pulling our opponent off their base, watch how I drive my elbow forward, and then I'm able to hook my opponent's shoulder. After I take my support hand out, I'm going to go palm to palm. So that way you have a two-dimension movement. I'm pushing on the back as I'm pulling across to finish that short choke. Now, making our transition to rear naked choke. Just for the purposes of this drill, we're going to do this sitting straight up, but you can finish this on the side as well. So same thing as short choke, we're pulling our opponent back, we're getting our top arm all the way across. I can start with that short choke. If I need extra, I'm just going to take my support hand and slide it behind my opponent's head. At the same time I'm doing that, this hand just needs to catch my bicep. I need to keep everything really tight here. Now to finish, I'm going to flex my arms. So I'm flexing both biceps. Now that can finish. That's one finish. But I need to flex and pull my elbow straight back for even tighter finish. So it's not just flexing your biceps, but it's flexing and pulling your elbows back. So we're in our seatbelt grip, pulling our opponent off the base, getting our choking arm all the way through. Notice how I have that elbow underneath my opponent's chin. Taking my hand out here, remember, here's short choke, but if I'm making the transition to rear naked, I'm just going to slide this hand. I want to be sneaky with it. I don't want to come out here like this. They're going to grab onto that arm. So make sure as I'm making that transition, it's sneaky. I bring the choking arm directly to the bicep. My hand goes behind. Now I'm flexing the biceps. Watch how that can take about five to six seconds to finish, but if I flex and pull straight back, it's much more violent. One more angle to show you guys that back position. As I'm finishing every naked choke, it's I'm pulling my shoulder blades together. I'm trying to get my shoulder blades to touch directly. That's that last little extra bit on finishing that rear naked choke. I get my everything set. I'm flexing and separating my elbows. I'm pinching my shoulder blades as tight as I can. For our transition, you can start with short choke and make your transition to rear naked. We're going to start with that and then you can also go rear naked to short choke. So if I'm setting up here and I'm setting up my short choke, I got it tight, I'm taking this hand out, but they're fighting pretty, pretty well. They're utilizing their four fingers on the forearm. That is the most effective defense for short choke and rear naked choke. So if they're able to dig both fingers inside your forearm, it's gonna be hard to finish. So I need to think about switching sides. Watch how I briefly take this bottom hook out and plant that foot on the mat. I'm using this foot right here to generate forward shrimp to get underneath my opponent. So I get underneath them and I have my foot on the mat to push the other side. As I'm pushing the other side, I'm going to rip my top arm out. So I rip it out. And now as I continue to fall to my other side, my right arm goes in. 
Now I have to short choke on the other side, or I transition directly to my rear naked choke to finish. So the key here, just doing it sitting up, right? As I'm attempting my short choke, they have their four fingers in. So in that moment that we're switching from side to side, right? I'm ripping this arm out. So now it's gone, and that's going to give me the opportunity to shove this arm directly underneath. I can go directly to rear naked choke, go back to a short choke on the other side, and as many times that they defend that choke, I just continue to go from side to side, push on the other side, one, two, go back here. If they do it again, switch sides, one, two, always alternating between short choke and rear naked choke. Now say you are on that rear naked choke, and they start attacking this arm back here, when they have that here, right, same thing. I'm ripping this arm straight out, and then I'm switching to either my short choke or my rear naked choke. In the beginning, we talked about we only need a handful of submissions. It's the ability to transition between one, two, three, maybe four submissions. That if you have those transitions very tight, that your success rate of finishing from the back can be very high. The number one priority is always going to be maintaining back control with the constant improvement of working for your submissions, whether it's chokes or arm bars.